Hi everyone, welcome to Shades of Radiology. Today I am going to discuss few classic cases useful for the NEET PG entrance and radiology, radiology residents. So let us see the cases. So what is this image? Don't get panicked with the image. Just have a look. What is it showing? What is the location? And what is the abnormality? So here it is a, it is a coronal chest CT. You can see it is a lung window. We do have windows in CT scan. That is the lung window, bone window and a soft tissue window. And this is a lung window. Except for the lung, you will not be able to see any other structure. You are not able to see any soft tissues. Here you can observe, you cannot see any soft tissue. It's completely bright. And whereas you can see lung and its vascular markings and the pathology in it very clearly. So this is the normal lung. You can see there is no any lesion here. And what is this? This is the abnormality. So this is nothing but a small cavity and some soft tissue content within the cavity, which is producing a present sign, which is classic of fungal ball, which is also called as aspergilloma. So this is a classic case of aspergilloma. What are the differences for aspergilloma? So they can ask you a differential. What are the other possibilities that image can represent? So the differentials can be a hyoid cyst and a pulmonary tuberculous cavity with Rasmussen's aneurysm or a blood clot within the cavity. So these are the possible DDs and one more rare possibility DD is a cavitatory carcinoma. Carcinoma arising within the tuberculous cavity. So these are the DDs for this case. So this is a case of classic aspergillum. So coming to the second case. So this is, these are the topogram of upper abdomen. You can see clearly the bowel gas here. This is the stomach taking the shape of the stomach gas and this is the large bowel with fecal content and these are the what is the abnormality here these are the multiple tiny radio opaque shadows in the shape of what is the shape what structure is located in the epigastrium so it's taking the shape of pancreas so this is a there are multiple calcific foci within the pancreas so let us see what's happening in the CT scan so in the CT scan these are the axial sections at the level of pancreas here you can see the kidneys and this is the pancreas you can see the calcifications this is the head of the pancreas and this is the body region and this is the tail region so our entire pancreas you are not able to see any soft tissue so it's atrophied and showing multiple calcifications and interactal calculi which is classically suggestive of chronic calcific pancreatitis so usually the ct will be easy to detect the chronic calcific pancreatitis the x-ray it will be slightly difficult and sometimes this is kept as a classic spotter or an image in your entrance questions so next case is what is what are these images this is a sagittal ct section you can see a sagittal slice of neck and this is the axial ct which is taken at the level of hyoid bone just below the level of hyoid bone so what is the abnormality here just have a look at normal structures once this is the tongue this is the spine vertebra you are able to see this is the spinal cord and this is the posterior soft tissue, this is the cutaneous fat which is dark in appearance. And so what is the abnormality here? Yeah. You can see a fluid density structure, this is not a soft tissue density. See it is a fluid density, see soft tissue is little brighter and whereas the fluid density is little slightly less than that of the adjacent soft tissue. So always compare with the density of the lesion with the adjacent soft tissues. And here this is a contrast CT, this is not a plain CT. You can see the contrast within the vertebral arteries as well as the cavitral arteries. So this is the way to differentiate. Always look at the vessels that will give you an indication whether it is a non-contrast CT or a contrast CT. As simple as that. And see what is the abnormality here. You are seeing a fluid density lesion here which is present below the hyoid bone and it is coming here and giving a bilobed appearance. And it is located in the midline. This is the mid sagittal plane. So it is located mainly in the midline. Here you can see in the axial section clearly it is located in the, exactly in the midline. So this is the classic case of based on the location, size and shape of the lesion which is diving below the hyoid bone most common location which lesion is located in infrahyoid location is a thyroglossal duct cyst so this is a classic case of thyroglossal duct cyst always remember <coughs> the differential diagnosis for the thyroglossal duct cyst are the branchial cleft cyst which is usually paramedian so always remember it as a differential diagnosis but not the diagnosis for this appearance and Delphian adenopathy laryngocele and ectopic thyroid nodule. So these are the differentials and to, the most important thing nowadays the entrance questions can be asked is what are the complications of thyroid loss and The image can be given and they will ask you what is the complication of this lesion. 
So there are two most complicated, there are two important complications that is the infection and the malignancy. So in, in infection, the patient presents with the severe pain and fever. On contrast, you will be seeing an enhancing wall, sometimes septa or the dense content within the lesion or the cyst. And coming to the malignancy is very rare, less than 1% of the cases will show the malignancy. And what is the thyroidal duct cyst contain? It contains remnants of thyroid tissue. So as simple as that, so what is the, what kind of malignancy is more common is the papillary carcinoma of thyroid. So whenever you see micro calcifications within the thyroidal duct cyst, it's highly, gives a high probability of malignancy. Always you should suspic uh, suspect malignancy in case of thyroidal duct cyst. Coming to next case, this is the case 4, we can see the brain. So what is the structure? Brain showing the coronal and axial section. So these two are coronal images and this is the axial section. And this is the plain flare image. This is not contrast here. You can see no vessels. But here you are seeing some bright, bright, bright structures. This is superior sagittal sinus. You can see the contrast within it. So this is the contrast MR. You can see the light transfer sinus. You can there is a contrast here. So this is the contrast T1 post contrast T1 weighted image. This is the coronal T1 post contrast weighted image. So what is the abnormality here? It's you, are, you can you will be able to see it very clearly here. Here you can see this is the normal parenchyma and see what's happening here. And this is the lesion. And you are seeing a smooth indentation. It's, this is not within the brain parenchyma. You can see the cortex is smooth and coming over the lesion and again it's continuous with the temporal lobe. So this is the frontal lobe. There is a lesion here which is of altered signal intensity lesion and it's causing a compression. So this is an extra axial lesion. So coming to the contrast, what's happening in the contrast? This is the crucial image which gives you the diagnosis. So you can see enhancement of the lesion. You can see the entire lesion is enhancing compared to the brain parenchyma. It's intensely enhancing and you can see some extension of enhancement on either side of the lesion. See here. And the same you can see appreciate here also in the axial image. And this is the axial image, and this is the dural tail. This is nothing but an enhancement of dura, giving a dural tail appearance. Usually the dura will not enhance. You can see here there is no any enhancement of dura, but here you are able to see the dura which is adjacent to the lesion. So this is a dural tail sign, extra axial lesion. So the classic case of left frontal convexity meningium. So coming to next case, so what is this? It's a classic case and a spotter you might have seen n number of times during your MBBS as well as clinical uh, postings. So this is a classic case of, so let me discuss before going to diagnosis, very simple. So you can see what is this, it's very smooth undulating pattern on either side of the vertebra you can see and these are nothing but the smooth osteophytes called as syndesmophytes. So there is a difference between the osteophytes due to degenerative genesis as well as the syndesmophytes. Syndesmophytes are very thin and smooth and they are continuous. So this is the classic case of showing continuous syndesmophytes on either side of the vertebra. So giving an appearance of bamboo. So this is a classic case of ankylosing spondylitis. The next video we will be discussing few more classic cases. Thank you.